welcome. I'm Pam Larickia from livingjoyfully.ca and today I'm here with Sue Patterson. Hi again, Sue. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I love having Sue on the podcast and I really appreciate her willingness to return over and over. And this time we want to talk about unpacking unschooling memes. Because memes can be great inspirational pick-me-ups, right? And especially when we're feeling off kilter, they can help us recenter. Yet Sue and I have both seen how the slightest bump on the unschooling road can quickly knock people off kilter again, right? Over and over, just back and forth and back and forth. And it seems that the challenge is when memes um, become more about distracting ourselves rather than actually helping us deeper into the root of whatever the issue is, right? So we're feeling a little off about something um, and the the meme uh, can, the, whatever that message is, can be like, oh yeah, you know, but if we don't dig in and figure out why that thing is knocking us off kilter in the first place, we can get kind of caught in that cycle, right? Of back and forth, of worry, oh, okay worry okay because we haven't really absorbed it it's more about somebody else's idea right, right. Does that make sense sorry to that's okay it makes total sense it makes total sense to me <laughs> <laughs> you know when your kids keep calling <laughs> and you're like i'm on a recording i can't talk now <laughs> real life real life exactly. but yeah I, you know we i have so I love memes <laughs> and I think I, you know, they're, it's kind of like just a little bit of a, you know, it helps us get connection and it helps us feel a little reassured and sometimes it gives us a little meh, meh, meh. <laughs> and sometimes we want that, you know, or some, sometimes we're in a little snarky mood and, um, but yeah, I think that what happens sometimes is you're moving along and you're starting to feel nervous and you fe and you see these memes and you're like, okay, that makes me feel a little better. But you didn't do any internal work. You know, you just kind of slapped a really good band-aid on top of it. And then so no wonder the next time your neighbor says, my kid's in the National Honor Society, why isn't yours? You know, what do you guys have to show for it? And you're like, ah! <laughs> and you throw a workbook at them or something. And um, I mean, I don't know anything about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, the reality is a lot of times people, uh, this is a little off, but a lot of times people listen to us and they see the end they see all our confidence and they see our kids are grown and happy and you know moving along and and they think it was all like perfect all along and that we never were scared or that we never had fear about some weird thing our kid was doing <laughs> or into or we're thinking will they ever you know all that kind of stuff we had that we all had that. Every one of us. Any man is telling you they didn't have that there. They were either very medicated <laughs> or that even it was happening because it's real people learning how to do stuff, learning how to live, learning how to cooperate and interact with each other and dive into their stuff and deal with all of the mainstream stuff that's coming at them, you know, that's telling them, you know, you need to compare each other and you need to compete and you need to you know, do something productive and stay, you know, at the front of the class kind of thing. Even when you're not in a class, you get that message, right? So, so it's not unusual that people would turn to memes or anything easy to make them feel a little better, right? Just to, am, am I alone in this? <laughs> and I think that that's often because in yeah. so many places, I mean, yeah, there are places, you know, like, southern california where there's a park day every day but that's not the norm the norm is that we have to work harder to have a little bit more connection with other kids and you know um 
And for it, ourselves too, right? We, like the kids. And our, and yeah, and we can it, feel isolated. Yeah. And so I was just thinking before we got on the call, I was thinking, I wonder about that isolation feeling. And we'll probably talk about it more with some of the memes, but I wonder how much of it, how much of that need for finding our people, how, how much of that is like a human nature thing that we need because maybe, you know, that's how you call the herd, <laughs> you know, the one that doesn't stay with the group, you know, gets left behind and eaten by the lions. And, um, or how much of that is indoctrinated into us with school? Yep. Stay with the group. Don't rock the boat. Don't get out of line. Don't miss the line. You'll miss lunch. <laughs> and so whether, even if it is hardwired into our evolutionary beings, it's also really, really solidified with school that we kind of want to look for our people, you know, so we don't feel isolated. Mm-hmm. And memes do that for us a lot of the time. I don't I know. know. It, it is. It's that quick little connection, right? Um, mm-hmm. and, and that can be valuable. It, it, I think part of it is really understanding ourselves and what we're looking for in that moment. So, right. I mean, that's what this is all about is, is taking that little step beyond just using it, uh, you know, scrolling through memes as more of a distraction or a little hit and um, right. taking that and and doing a little bit more work with it, digging a little bit deeper. It's not necessarily hard work. It, it's And it's such valuable work. It's, it's raising our own like self-awareness, understanding ourselves a bit better. And what we're going to do today in this episode, so just to let you know, we're going to dig into five. What are they doing? What are they doing this time? (laughs) (laughs) Unschooling memes from Sue's unschooling mom to mom Instagram feed. Um, And we're going to uh, take a peek at them because they all make sense. Definitely make sense on the surface and they can feel soothing immediately and they can help us feel a connect. Oh, there are other people that think like this out there in the world. Right. Yeah. But if we dig deeper, we can learn more, not only about unschooling, but as I said, that self-awareness about ourselves. And the more we understand unschooling and the more we understand ourselves, I think the less we're buffeted around by our right. fears, by all right. the mainstream messages we get, and also better understanding what you were talking about, that need for community, ways ways to... Um, dress it that's not really the right word but um you know ways we can meet that anyway so let's dive into our first one okay okay so I'm going to (laughs) I'm gonna you know uh, you know something you just said I was gonna make a note but I'm just gonna interrupt you (laughs) um you know that idea of buffeted around because because we haven't done the internal work yeah number one I love that you said it doesn't have to be hard yeah you know, that we think, oh, I'm not going to open Pandora's box or something. It's not Pandora's box. And that's kind of a de-schooling thing, too, because what this is, is very individualized stuff. You were never encouraged to do individualized stuff in school. Mm-hmm. You were always encouraged to just look for that one right answer, even if you have to cheat and look in the back of the chapter. You know, get that one right answer, but don't do anything thought provoking or dig a little deeper. And so it's not um, our habit to do that. So it's like just creating a new habit that maybe you would look at stuff and, and think about it, ponder it. Where do you go with it? Don't tell yourself, I got to have the right answer. Just tell you, where do I go with that? And then see how that works. And that idea of being Swaying around reminds me of like the visual. I'll have to make a meme. It reminds <laughs> me of the visual of like when you drop your root deeper, you know? So you drop your root deeper, and when that storm comes, the tree stands. But if you don't drop your root and it's shallow, gone, you know? So, so true. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I talk about um de-schooling and understanding unschooling better i i usually i visualize it in the sense of building a foundation but it's that same yeah. thing as sinking those roots in right it's right the whole right. idea of not getting buffeted around um yeah. because you're just taking some time to think and i love your point you know that that it's 
it's the act that's different. It doesn't really mean right. that it has to be hard. I mean, definitely some are going to be harder than others. Some are more ingrained yeah. things that, that we question. But I think that that's the biggest point is that um, we've been taught to look for that one right answer and that if we don't feel that way, we're the ones that are wrong. And right. we've been taught right. not to look to look out there and find the right answer, not look at our lives and ourselves and see what works best for us. So those mm -hmm. are the two kind of shifts that that I think are going to come up as we go through all of them, because that is kind of the new way. And uh, we're so judgy on ourselves. Like we look at, OK, so she's totally confident. I'm still back here. I need to be here. Well, no, you really only need to be here and then here and then here. And before you know it, you yeah. will be confident, sure. but you don't have to do that giant leap. You don't run a marathon when you're still like around the block, get your winded, you know? <laughs> no, absolutely. Me and my metaphors. It's a, it's a, <laughs> me and my journey metaphor. Absolutely. I love it. I love yeah. it. Love it. Love it. Go from one place, you know? There's no teleportation mm -hmm. and right. the journey is so valuable because that is how you learn it. You can, right. you can see how, like you were talking about before, you know, those of us who, who have older kids now, whose kids are grown and everything, and you can see what our lives look like and we can tell you what our lives look like, but it incorporates all the learning that we did along the right. way. We didn't just step there. You know, right. not that one big leap, right? It's right. all learning and it's all individual. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks different for every family. It looks different for every person. Okay. Okay. So first me. We'll never get to our plan. Oh, no, if we don't. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Here we are. Share. We are who we are. <laughs> you cannot raise your children as your parents raised you because your parents raised you for a world that no longer exists. All right. That got a lot that got a lot of attention. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Now, and I I find it fascinating um because the pace of change in our world really has increased dramatically. You know, up until the industrial revolution pretty much life did not change between generations, right? But Be between one That's or two much. generations. So much of the parents' experiences and their advice, etc., was reasonably relevant. Barring, right. you know, personality differences and, right. and you know, goals and things like that. But but the world, as they're talking about here, really didn't change much, right? Mm -hmm. So I think this reminder can feel really soothing because may, maybe if we're struggling um, with our parents making comments about our parenting choices, right? Or we're wishing sometimes that we had that parenting template to follow because we're feeling overwhelmed with figuring it all out for ourselves. You yeah. know, when we're feeling off kilter about those kinds of things, this can be a great soothing reminder that things really are different, right? Right. Yeah, and I think from the, from the people that come and talk to me, the majority of people have parents that are not crazy about this idea. <laughs> yeah. The majority of people have parents who say, this was good enough for you. This was good enough for me. Why do you think you got to do things differently? Or they think, I think your kid is not progressing because now they have, they have this belief that reading happens at seven and times tables at eight. And, you know, that there's something that is like a pattern and that's just because that's when they teach it. It's not because that's when kids, you know, really integrate concepts like that. Yeah. So I think a lot of parent, a lot of grandparents have a hard time with this thing. And so the other thing that's kind of interesting is a lot of the parents I talk to are younger, you know, they are under 30. They have um, they're, they have little kids and I can remember that there is a shift that has to happen that you shift from being a daughter and a sister to being the parent 
And as a daughter and a sister, you're, you listen more, you, I mean, not all of us, because some of us were a little rebellious, but, but you, you don't have that confidence of this is my kid. These are my choices. You don't have a vote. You know, we may say it, but we don't like feel it yet because it's, it's like a, it's a new role. It's a brand new role to step into and nobody taught us how to do it. Nobody showed us that there will be times that your parents may shame you or put you down or all the things that were maybe your parents' style of how do they get you in line. And um, you're going to have to learn how to deal with that in a more mature way, in a way that really doesn't impact you because you don't, most of us don't live with them. You don't you don't need their approval. And it is, it is hard to go from, we, we've been so conditioned to want approval, right? We've been so conditioned to want approval from teachers or from parents. And, and um, I think that um, it's a whole new role and, and we don't really, we don't really talk about that a lot. That'd be another good topic about, <laughs> about how to move from, you know, we've, you're a kid and then you're a teen and then you're a young adult with no kids and you're just kind of checking out the world. And then you start to have kids and you have this new role and nobody's really like prepped you for it. So, so what do you do because of all that conditioning? You are looking for a formula. <laughs> you want to, you know, you want things, our brains do that anyway. You know, they want to make sense of stuff. And so I think that when, we think, oh, well, you know, dad ch showed me what to do when the toilet overflows. Maybe he can show me what to do when my kid is acting like this. Or only no, because those days are different. Our parenting styles are different. You know, there was all kinds of, you know, we've had, we, we had, while in some areas, not so much, but we have made some progress on our, the way we look at children and how we see them as people. And certainly as unschoolers, the way we look at children is a lot differently, is a lot diff different from the way a lot of mainstream people look at children. And so our parents are still in that kind of mainstream way, right? Most of the time, most of us didn't come from some bohemian family, you know? Um, <laughs> wouldn't that have been? So now our kids will have these, wow, well, my mom never let me, <laughs> my mom let me do that all the time. And, um, it's always going to be different. We're always going to look, we're always going to want um, to have some way to make sense of it. Mm -hmm. But I think that because most of the time people, people are, people do rely on their moms and their, and their aunts. And, 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 and it, you know, I've had a lot of people tell me, you know, I was devastated when they didn't like what I was doing. I thought what I was doing was great. So to find a meme that says, hey, you know what? You're not alone. <laughs> people are people are like, yeah, <laughs> thank goodness. Thank goodness I'm not alone on that. Yeah. So, yeah. but times well, change, you know, I would guess people, you, you, that's those other memes that are like um, how people thought that if you let women read, you know, that, that it's going to be down this horrible path of, um, you know, they'll only read, I can't even remember what it was, but, but it was the idea of moving from a no books to a books. They thought books were going to be the end of the world. And so then we had TV and everybody was terrified that too much TV was going to make the kids have little TV boxes for eyeballs. And now it's just video games, too much video. You know, it's all we, every generation, it's something for parents to say, well, we never let you because it didn't exist like this back then. So, yeah, um, yeah, no, I mean, uh, when those things, <clears throat> TV and games and all that stuff is pretty new. Um, but yeah, I mean, your, your point about the, our, our shifting role too, that's a really good, um, mm -hmm. thing to dig in when you, you know, through this meme, that's a great way to look at our different perspectives, right? Right. And I think it helps too. We can also take that and jump forward. We can realize that the world's going to be different again when our kids. Oh, that's adults, a good point. Right. So 
it can, if we dig into this, that can help us start to release some of our expectations around what our kids' adult life should look like and realize that we really don't know no more than, than our parents knew what things were going to be like for us, right? So that can help us, you know, um, release that worry for the future some and refocus back on this moment because that's all we can predict. That's all we've got, really, right? Right. Moment. Right, right. And we're right. going to discover what the future's like with our kids, right? So, this- yeah. And I think, too, like when we recognize that sometimes it's ego in there, you know, that it's our, our parents have some ego wrapped up. Are you saying that I did a bad job? Are you criticizing my parenting? So, okay. So we, so we deal with that. And then our kids grow up. And they decide not to unschool or they decide not to have kids or they decide whatever some story in our head that we thought, but, but it's going to look like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we need to recognize to kind of like be on guard for that. Be aware that that's a natural thing too, that our ego is going to want to have our story keep playing out the way we want it. Only yeah. we've got to realize that we are not the director of their life, their story. They get exactly. to direct it just like they directed it. Then they'll direct it on their own too. And so, <clears throat> you know, again, it's that reason to do that little bit of a deep dive to figure out why do I feel like this? Why is this bothering me? And then you can kind of look at why. Yeah. And you know, the other piece that occurred to me that I thought was cool is when you think about raising kids, right? Raising our children, what's at the root of that? We were talking, you were talking about roots, right? Growing these roots. It really is our love for them, right? And our relationships with them, being with them. And that hasn't changed. Right. 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 That's what's in the roots. That's what's at the foundation. What matters is being with our kids now and engaging in life alongside them and loving them unconditionally. And I think like when, when I got there, that felt so empowering, which mm-hmm. might be a bit of the glimpse that we feel when, when we feel good and connect when we right. actually read the meme, right? Right. So I thought that was really cool that foundationally, like you were, and you, you had a great point before how, um, how we as a society view um, children has changed but I mean that's changed for us still outside the mainstream right Right. you know there there have always been parents outside the mainstream as well you know so it's uh, you know that there have always been parents who loved their children uh, unconditionally and who you know didn't try to control them or or put their goals and stuff on top of them so you know there's that connection. and I think that our, I think those numbers could be growing and maybe that's yeah. just helpful on my part yeah, I mean, <laughs> nah. but I think that especially with the internet you know that people can learn about it so yeah. so I might have had a mom that would have done that had somebody had a conversation with her about it but nobody was having a conversation with her about exactly. it so she still smacked her kids and you know we're now having conversations and we're like oh oh yeah that is not what I want to (laughs) do where you know that's how those family traditions you know can stop with you the good things can grow and the bad things can say "Eh, not past here (laughs) no exactly I mean and that's part of this generation the the internet was how I discovered homeschooling even existed right (laughs) <laughs> right, 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 right. Yep. So I think that it could be, you know, yes, we're still like two or three percent of the population, but maybe not always. Yeah. You know, or or maybe maybe even not that I'm like an evangelist for homeschooling or unschooling. I don't do that, but I think that sometimes people can some of these principles that we have kind of like really fleshed out you know like we're talking about it a lot we're diving in we're figuring yeah they could still apply some of those while their kids go to school they can take school on their terms you know they can they can apply some of the principles and that can be part of the you know the cultural shift in how we 
deal with kids. Yeah, no, as there's more and more of us out there just living our lives in the world. I, it's, it's just planting little seeds that right. things can be different. And at the moment when somebody else becomes curious enough, like, you know, my kids' friends now know that such a thing exists as not going to school, right? Right, right. You know, right. So even that, maybe someday when they're a parent, they may go, hey, I'm going to learn a little bit about that and see if Yeah, and even it can be little, like you're in the grocery store and some mom's totally overwhelmed and some older person is giving them a dirty look because their kid's running wild in the store and you can help her instead of add to it. Or even if you just say... They won't always be toddlers. <laughs> you know, just a little kindness can go a long way. You'd be surprised. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Me Next. Number two. Let's pop over here. Not every place you fit in is where you belong. Do you want to start with this one? Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Um. You know, that's that thing about being conditioned to fit in, right? That we are, and that sometimes just because we're good at something doesn't mean we're going to need to do it. Doesn't mean that it brings us joy. And, um, and yet, even within our unschooling community, we kind of want to have a little bit of commonality with people. But even within our community, there are some people that I probably wouldn't hang out with <laughs> and they can be unschoolers and that's okay. And there are some people who go have their kids in school and I like them a lot. And so, you know, it's don't, you know, you have to be careful to not um, want that fit in stuff so badly that you just wedge your little tangerine thing whatever that is <laughs> into the garlic <laughs> I guess it's got to be more like mandarin orange and, um um it's okay you don't you don't need you don't need a a an identical peer group how mm -hmm. fun is that not very you know that to me is just built out of fear that means I don't want to I don't want to be different I don't want to um I don't want to be shunned. You know, I want everyone to accept me and approve of me. And so I'll just wedge myself into this little garlic. <laughs> and um, some, I mean, to be honest, sometimes we do that a little bit because our kids want to participate in something. And so we're like, I can bite my tongue. I can deal with it. You know, we had that and then, but when you do a little bit of internal work again, you know who you are, where you draw your lines, what you believe, how you're going to deal with your kids, how you're okay with being more orangey than garlicky and, um, and you take life on your terms. You deal with it um, the way you need to. And then you just continue with the self-awareness you know, and the other people awareness and your kids awareness and where do we need to go and how is all of this impacting us? Mm -hmm. What does it mean for you? For me, what, and it, it ties in so nicely with what you said there. This meme reminds me that everything I do is a choice, right? Yeah. Um, that, okay, maybe I fit in or maybe I feel like I should fit in, you know, like for school, there's a place waiting for them, right? But is that where they belong? And then I'll, that's when I get my agency back. That's when I realize it's a choice because it's not about whether I can or whether I should. It's, it's do I want to? Is this something that, that I want to be part of, right? Right. And then we can dig deeper and think of other places in our lives where we may be doing something out of obligation, right? Or out of meeting other people's expectations. And that reminds us just, oh, I can start asking myself, is this where we belong? Is this where I want to be? And I loved your point about 
Um, sometimes going places like where our kids want to go. Sometimes there may be a bigger picture reason for things that we want to do or places we want to be involved with or mm -hmm. engaged in, et cetera. Um, but getting that self-awareness piece, encouraging ourselves to think about it for a minute. Is this where we belong? Is this my choice? Why do I want to do this? Reminds us of those reasons. So if there are things that don't quite fit, that's okay because we remember the bigger picture reason right. why we want to be there. Right. And even if it is our kids and it's chatting with them, because sometimes, you know, um, those, sometimes there's a few little things that don't quite fit for them, but it's so worth it. Right. right. It doesn't right. really bother them as much as maybe it bothers us. Um, and, but that experience, if it's something they're wanting to do, that experience isn't about us, mm -hmm. right? It is about right. them. Right. So right. that's where we sort out this, where you belong and places you fit in the bigger picture of, of the meme, right? It's realizing like who's involved, who's wanting to do this. Why are they what you want out of it? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. It just helps you just dig into all that juiciness. <laughs> Juicy Mandarin orange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, no. So I really, I, I uh, that's that's. What and I, mean. and you know, you do sometimes see it even online. You see people that they say, "Where can I?" I you know, I only want to find other unschoolers or something like that. And um, or they, and so that's again some of that internal stuff that that's not real life. Real life, you don't. You're not identical to your other people and so you might really feel lifted up by having people around you that share your parenting styles or share your you know all kinds of other like commonalities and um but it doesn't have to be identical it doesn't have to always be unschooling it can be you know whatever you need it to be and and we're you know again when we take it apart and we look at no this is this is part of that old de-schooling stuff that you know no third graders stay with third graders don't play with fourth graders or second graders <laughs> and um you know and so it's not like that unschoolers play with unschoolers not unit study not school at home <laughs> let's not let's not you know put that over it yeah. you know yeah, no, that's a great point. And that's the really fun thing back to choice, right? The communities you want to engage in. And over the right. years, those communities change. Often they're around our interests. And yes, uh, you know, we would travel to conferences with other unschoolers and enjoy the time right. that we got to hang out with them doing those kind of things. Um, like being with people who have those similar parenting choices. But like you right. said, those aren't the only choices that we make in our right. life, right? right. So right. it can be through all sorts of different connections. And, and what you get out of connecting around that interest is one thing. But yeah, they don't, you're not like living together it, right. You know what? Even well, living together, not all of our interests mesh. Right? Exactly. Exactly. You know, I think family. it has to do with just taking that little bit of time of knowing who you are, yeah. where, what you like, where you're putting your boundaries. You know, what do you, where, what do you know about yourself? Yeah. And that takes some looking. You really have to kind of, I like this, but not this. I like this, but not this. I like, you know, and you kind of like, and the more you get stronger the deeper the root, and the more you're able to interact in communities that can be really different from you because you know who you are. You That's know, right. you don't you have that to root. Around. It doesn't buffet yeah, you, you around have so to much. Scream when it at people. I'm an unscholar. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to do that. No. You just walk through, <laughs> yeah. you know, because your root is strong and you've taken the time to know who you are. And, you know, we, and we have little obstacles that we have to overcome or we have to talk through and maybe it helps to talk through with people about how did, how do you get past this or what do you do to, and, and so that's always a good thing to do. And, but I think that the more we do it, and it doesn't mean you have to spend like 
seven days a week, four hours a day, reading it, learning it, learning. <laughs> no, but you might just think about it over coffee every morning, you know, and next thing you know, you feel stronger. And that's really, especially if it's back to school time, people feel weak. <laughs> you know, it's like that bubble that's around us most of the time. We're happy, playing, do nothing. And this time of year, that is thin. <laughs> people get through. And, you know, every grocery store clerk is saying, you know, are you ready for school? And if you haven't done a little bit of that, where am I in this world? then you can be buffeted around and you can feel like you're second guessing your choices because it's sometimes what happens is we dive into unschooling. It sounds great. We, we know a couple people and we just kind of get on that and we don't have to do a lot of deep work because it's clicking. And, but that's why you should do it, whether it's clicking or not, because there will come a time it's not clicking. And you will, you know, you will want to be able to know where you are with it, you know, and, and know what you want, how you want to, how you want to approach the kids, how you want to approach learning, how you want to approach parenting, how you want to approach education, all of it. It just takes a little bit of thinking about it instead of just going along for the ride, which you can do if you just do meme after meme after meme after meme, you know. Yeah, no, that, I mean, that's, that really is the, the, the point, right? Is that you take the time to think about it and, and that being open to seeing how it's working. Like you're gaining that experience over time, right? Right. When your thoughts start meshing with your experiences, that's when your trust grows. That's when your roots grow. That's when you're really understanding what's going on. And you don't get knocked around. Sure, absolutely new things come up, new situations, new people. And they always will. But they just always will, no matter how old your kids are. <laughs> you've got that foundation of the process. Right. 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 So right. you don't get knocked so as far off kilter. Okay, number three. Did you say process? I did. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love the Canadians. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, okay. number three. I don't have a nine to five job. I have a, when I open my eyes to when I close my eyes job. <laughs> I'm going to go first with this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People like that one. <laughs> it, it gives us a quick giggle, right? Right. And right. Soothe us when we feel like our parenting work is never done. And we can look at the picture and say, oh yeah, you know, that looks very familiar. And I had told Sue earlier, it reminds me of an online account name that I created way back around when we started unschooling, um, early 2000s. And my account name was 24 Hour Mom. It was all about this idea and realizing, oh, you know what? I am a mom all the time. Because when you think about it a little bit deeper, who hasn't had a child wake them up in the middle of the night? Right. 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 And, and we still respond. We're still always parenting. And over the years, I had a few people comment on on my name going, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it's a really great place to start. And it's a really great acknowledgement and that sense of community again. Right. But we can dig a bit deeper and contemplate that whole idea of parenting as a job. Mm. is that a helpful comparison or perspective to have I know for me I eventually came to embrace parenting really more as part of who I am versus not just what I do it's not a job I do it's not like a role I play it is part of my being it's part of who I am and I, I did write a blog post about that epiphany, and I'll put the link to that in the show notes. But peeling back that layer really helped me to stop looking for those times when I wasn't parenting. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Not in that martyrly sense of I'm giving myself up for my children, right? Not as in forgetting about myself so that I can be a parent. But it's almost the opposite for me anyway. It was more about I'm embracing my whole self and bringing all of me to each moment, whether the kids are around or not. 
Right, right. Right. So that I that delineation between parenting as a job and, and I have to do it for all these hours and everything, that was for me on my unschooling journey a huge shift. Now I totally understand and giggled and smiled at this meme because you get where you're going, but you can really dig deeper to that. And yeah. And that's that self-awareness piece. Who right. do I want to be? What kind of parent do I want to be? How do I see parenting? Right, right. And I think it kind of goes towards that whole mommy wars stuff about whether you're a stay-at-home mom or you go to work. And um, mm-hmm. and a lot of times moms that stay at home feel defensive. And so I think anytime we feel defensive, it, it's a little flag. You should maybe look here. (laughs) Um, Why? Why do you feel defensive? Why? Why do you need their approval? Why do you? You know why? You know I can remember when I first stayed home with my kids. I went to this little um, get together party thing, and I was I guess I was twenty eight ish, and somebody said, "You're not going back to work," and I was like, "No," and they're like, "What are you gonna do all day?" I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. And they're like, man, your mind's just going to turn to mush. I'm like, I think we need to stop talking. <laughs> and, but I mean, there, you know, we had a big wave of, you know, women fought to work, you know, they fought to be able to enter the workplace. And, um, and I think that's great. And my mom was certainly part of that wave and always wanted me to work because that had been denied, you know, as, you know, not that long ago. And, um, but I think what's really great about feminism, when you really look at it, is it allows you to make a choice. You can, you don't have to be defensive of one side or the other. You can do a little of both. You know, you can be a mom for this period of time. You can work here and you can work after you can, you know, it, you just have all kinds of choices. And that's what, you know, all we want is for ourselves and for our kids is for them to have choices and to have choices that resonate with them. And one of the things that you were saying that I thought, that's it. It's, it's about kids are kids 24 hours. They're not just kids at certain hours of the day. (laughs) So why wouldn't moms and dads be moms and dads 24 hours? Of course they are. Of course they are. And because it's not a job, it's who you are. It's just all the way integrated in. And when you, you know, and sometimes when you think about when am I getting my me time, (laughs) you know, that that's often a leftover from that idea of I have my job life and I have my personal life and and so then you're like, well, okay, so I'm getting rid of this one. Do I have to get rid of this one too? No, but you can integrate your personal life into your motherhood, into your fatherhood. You can integrate some work into your motherhood and into your fatherhood too. It doesn't have to be an either or. And it certainly doesn't mean nine to five. It may, you know, the parenting part, if, if your kid is 24 hours, then so are you. you know and that's okay it's not the end of the world it's not like you have to stay um I don't know so the point is that you just look at it think about what what is what are these different memes what where where are they pinging in my brain yeah and why and and then kind of like just examine just a little bit why did I laugh why do I feel defensive why do I, you know, and, and, and maybe we just are kind of happy. We don't always have to wear pants, <laughs> you know, that's okay too. I mean, whatever, you know, it's just, and, and so, but yeah, it's that same thing about you. We're in this together. We got you. You're not by yourself. You're not just that lady at the cocktail party saying, what are you going to do? <laughs> um, but you know, that doesn't, bother me now it bothered me then because I was like oh my god what am I gonna do <laughs> oh, no I hadn't oh. taken the time to do the to do the thought work on it exactly 
that that was that's completely part of the journey and that's why it's unique for everybody because it depends completely on where you are what your life experience have been to to this point what your choice have been to this point who right. you are as a person your goals your everything you know all that weaves together um to create our outlook and as we're questioning things we're just kind of reweaving that right together right <laughs> yeah and that's why it's so unique yeah that's why you can't take this is this and this is that and I want to copy you can't yeah. there are just too many threads yeah <laughs> there we got a good metaphor <laughs> yeah, yeah you know me <laughs> okay. our next one here we go here we go okay, go away number four there we go <laughs> The reason that kids need to learn to read so early in school is because in school, kids read about doing stuff instead of doing stuff. When kids live life outside of school, they actually get to do stuff. So it's not as important to read about it in order to learn it. Um, I think this is a great reminder and it was a nice, it, it was a longer one. It had a little bit more explanation in there, um, but it's also something we can dig into, isn't it? Right, 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 right. So I think, you know, there is a big push about learning to read. There is a big push about it being the Holy Grail. <laughs> and um, I think, well, I, you know, learning to read is important in a school setting because after first, second and third grade, they stop and maybe it's different now. It's probably earlier. They stop. um speaking the information to the children and they require the children to read it for themselves so if you didn't get reading by seven or eight you could fall behind and that's because the system prioritizes itself it's trying to move kids along and this is how you can get more evidently conveyed in our world you don't have those kinds of limitations you don't stop speaking to your child and just hand them a memo in the morning of what they're day you know you are you know you're still talking with there you're able to see how do they like to get information do they like it on videos do they like it on on conversations do they like it do they like to read about it? Do they like to meet people that do it? Do they, can they do a little of all of it? And then we just see how their brains like it and how they, what they remember and what they don't remember. And that's all fine too. And I think that, you know, we have so much more flexibility. And then instead of, I mean, this doesn't even take in the idea of travel, you know, that you, instead of just reading about, the mountains or the Smithsonian or you actually can go you can see it you can use all your senses and then you don't have to only just read about it and that's one of the things that's really different about you know when we think about what are our advantages you know we hear all the time about well you know, your kids are going to, you know, all the negative things people say about homeschool kids or unschooled kids. So it helps to think about what are some of the advantages that your kids are going to have because you chose this kind of unconventional way. And one of the advantages is they get to actually see things in real life instead of just read about them, you know, and you read about something after lunch in school and you might not remember it you're kind of in your little postprandial slump <laughs> and you're not paying attention at one o'clock and then you missed it whereas if you went somewhere and you saw um you know all kinds of things whatever happens to be interesting to your kids so then not only do they have the first-hand experience and that will give them something to latch on to if they ever want to like dive in more or learn more about it. Um, but they also, you know, you're going to take pictures. And so that will help them with their memory of it. 
And it, it just gives them this opportunity to have real world experiences. That's an enormous advantage with unschooling. It's not like we're just sitting home. And, and even for the kids that do like to sit home, they can watch things on YouTube and see things on online that kids in school aren't allowed to do. You know, they're not allowed to dive in. And, and you know, there are some really cool websites that are museums and NASA and all kinds of stuff that allows kids to see stuff and stay with it longer than just that little par paragraph in the chapter on in history, you know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That 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 is a, a great point. And and it it is similar to to what uh I I dug into um when when I looked at it because you know at first when you read it that's it's a quick soothing balm on you know it, our reading worries because you know, that is that is a big piece you know how are my kids going to learn to read when are they going to learn to read oh it's okay if they're a little bit later and so you know you read that and go oh okay that's that's true that's true and your reading worries can abate for a little while but when you think a little bit deeper about it you know you start asking yourself questions like well how do kids learn through doing stuff like you had shared some great examples about the way kids learn and then then you think about you know how about you know how you even define learning right versus memorizing things for the test but when you have the experience even when you're just having fun Right. Whether you're watching something like that emotional connection helps solidify that learning piece, right? right? It connects it with something in your day. It's not this random piece of information that you have to try and remember. It's connected to whatever you were doing. It's connected to right. what you were thinking. So you're building a stronger map of learning, I think, in, in the whole thing, right? Place, right? right. Um, you can ask yourself, what have I seen my kids learning without reading about it, right? We're back to uh, us being open and observing and actually processing <laughs> our experiences with our kids, what it looks like, what does learning look like in our lives, right? Because right. now you're owning it. That's the difference between somebody telling you stuff and really understanding it and owning it and seeing it in action in your life. That's where that trust comes from. That's where that, how that root grows is mm -hmm. through your own experiences. And I mm -hmm. bet most people can come up with a super long list of things that their kids ha and themselves, right, have learned through doing or through watching or through listening or through experimenting. Which is a great exercise, playing. you know, just start yeah. listing it. List the things you learned that you didn't have to read about it, but you learned it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that we're so, you know, it's really interesting because all of the educational research shows us that there are so many different learning styles. And, and yet, school continues to push towards this particular learning style and so, I think because it's and, what and works best with the system, system right I mean right right it's it's the system they need to um Im share this information and try to teach this information to a large group of kids you know so mm -hmm. this is the most efficient so they work way. on their bell curve and yeah 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 exactly so you know but you don't you have to do that exactly Glee, <laughs> you know, so don't, that's you know, it. I think that, I that. think that, you know, sometimes I see, and it doesn't have to do with that meme, but I think that, yeah. you know, the really progressive schools look more like home. <laughs> you know, they have like a living room atmosphere. They have, uh, you know, there's more movement and flexibility, the really progressive schools. So let's not <laughs> duplicate the less progressive schools, you know, <laughs> let's recognize that, no, our way is how people naturally learn, you know, by being involved and using other senses and, um, and getting exposure to things and building that pile of knowledge like you're talking about that's, that's like in context so that they will be able to access it later. You've got all these out of context facts in school they don't get used. They're lost. That's why they don't remember everything, uh, anything after that Friday quiz, you know? So 
you have real life where one thing really does connect to another and connect to another. And you don't have to orchestrate all of that. You might toss something in or expose them to something like the best tour guide on the planet. But you, you don't have to like run it. <laughs> you don't have to, we don't have to have a lesson plan. We can have real life. One thing really leads to another because then that thread is thicker. You know, it connects better. Yeah. And that's the great thing about because we are as individuals, right? Okay. So that's the whole point with the curriculum. You've got this pre-strung thread, you know, what path you want it to go yet. It's very individual for each child in reality. Like I could take all three of my kids to the science center or to the zoo or to the park or to the store and all three of them will make or to dinner, <laughs> or dinner. upstairs. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Right. All make different connections. They will all right. learn different pieces. Something different will stand out for each of them because of where they are, but all of them are learning, right? It's just different. It's just really individual for them. And it's, you know, I say it's the most personalized curriculum ever. Exactly. Not having a curriculum. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's when you look at when schools talk about individualized learning plans, that's lip service compared to what we do. <laughs> this is individualized on steroids. This is the most individualized, experiential, progressive learning plan you could ever want. Use those words if your mom's bothering you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, look, there we are. We started with a meme, right? That right. that helped us feel better even about later readers, right? Right. And we can take that and dive deeper and it helps us understand better how unschooling works. Boom. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. You there. watching our unschooling minds unravel before okay. you're <laughs> So and you know what? Each each person taking that meme and digging deeper it could look different for them right because right. of where they are oh, yeah. and what their questions are and what their fears are around it at that moment all we're saying is it's so worth taking that extra moment to right. dig deeper right right okay right. so our last one last one sharing, sharing by the end of it okay <laughs> in the end i am the only one who can give my kids a happy mother who loves life right and I think that a lot of times when we a lot of times when we are parenting it, it cannot feel glorious <laughs> it can feel tedious it can feel frustrating and so um but again like absolutely everything we've got all kinds of choices i'm not saying people don't have bad things that happen but how you react to it is how you live your life you only got one and so what your kids what your kids are seeing is how you react to adversity how you react to boredom sometimes there are sometimes really <laughs> you know another round of candy land <laughs> and that's okay so you just ponder how cute they are or how they used to throw the game <laughs> whenever whenever they started to fall behind and look how much better they're doing at this <laughs> and you know so you start to kind of like work with it and that's how you how do you want, what kind of mom do you want to be? What do you want? What kind of dad do you want to be? Who do you want to be in this world? You're only going to have so many years with these kids and the words that come out of your mouth, the raised eyebrows, the, all that stuff is going to stick in their head. What do you want to stick in their head? And so I think that when we, when we get a meme like that, we think somebody gets me. <laughs> And it also reassures you and, and, you know, like anything, you've got laundry and you've got groceries and you've got the kid has the flu and you've got all these things going on. And some meme reminds you, you've got some choices in here. What do you want to do? And, 
it pulls it back to the front of your mind to just give yourself a couple little thoughts about what kind of mom do I want to be today? How can I right now up my game a little bit? You know, I don't mean be super mom. I just mean, don't be mean mom. <laughs> don't be, you know, like if, it, just, just inch it. You know, you were, you were really crabby this morning. So be more pleasant at noon. <laughs> or if you, you know, you're just kind of weighing it out and just trying to get just a tiny bit better. You don't have to like solve world hunger. You just have to, how can you sparkle a little? You know, that's that Toni Morrison quote. How can you sparkle a little when they walk in the room? Because they're noticing that. It takes nothing from you to do that. It can be a new habit. Yeah. Yeah, no. And for me, that's, it seems all these things remind me and boil, boil down to reminding me that I have a choice, right? Um, and how integral with this one, it was how integral we are in our kids' life. And that, mm -hmm. and that choice piece in their life that you were talking about, right? The sparkling, them noticing all the little pieces, you know, we don't choose to be um, mean or crabby or whatever. Mm -hmm. Those, those things um, are, are happen. They're just part of our experience. And if the little meme goes by and it reminds us, oh, I have a choice. I can flip in this moment. I can get back to this moment. I don't have to stay stuck where I was feeling crappy about whatever it was in that moment. Oh, I can, I can choose my next, my next moment, right? right? And choose who I want to be, the parent kind of parent I want to be, the kind of person I want to be. It just happens that they're my kids that I'm with, you know, maybe it's my spouse, maybe it's my friends. I'm still choosing who I want to be in that moment, right? right? Right. And for me, then digging deeper into that, I get to ask myself, you know, what does happy mean to me? Like looking at the words that were that are in there, right? Oh, well, how do I define happiness? As you said, life is full of ups and downs, right? What mm -hmm. does the idea of being happy look like during a time when things are off kilter? Like this is all self-awareness stuff, right? This is all right. just understanding ourselves better and understanding who we want to be. You know, do I want to be someone who holds on to that grumpiness longer because I can? Um right. You know, and then I can ask myself, are there some ways to release it? Are there some ways where I don't need to put it out on the people around me? Do I need something, you know, can I do something with the people around me to help me pull myself up? Like, I remember there, there were times when there were certain activities and things I would uh, invite the kids to do or ask the kids if we can do, if I needed a little bit more downtime or a little bit more quiet time in this moment. You know, because it's not a separate, it's us living together. Right. 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 And then, then we can think about the phrase love life. You know, what does it mean to us to be somebody who loves life? What does that look like? You know, does that inspire us to engage more with our kids, to engage more with the world around us, to just be a little bit more active? Actually, as I was thinking about it, I, I was reminded of something that Ann Oman often says, get out of your head and into the moment there we are back in the moment, right? Because right. that's where the fears live, circling around in our heads, right? And then then we look like the aloof mom to our kids, maybe, or the right. disengaged mom, or the busy mom, or the crabby mom, you know, all those other things that we look like from the outside. Um, maybe that's not the choice we want to bring into that moment, right? Mm -hmm. um, because... There, there's how we feel, but there's also the perception of how we seem to, to those who we care about in our lives, right. right? Is that this is the message that we're sending through our actions. Is that the message that I really want to be sending? Or can I maybe explain more? Can I shift? Like all that kind of stuff. It again, just, just digging a little bit deeper into that meme, that phrase that sentence right. helps us better understand ourselves and and each moment and how we want to live our days doesn't it <laughs> yeah and I think sometimes we don't you know we wonder like why didn't I let that go why did I stay in that grumpy place and oftentimes it's because we don't feel heard we don't feel like you know why you know we're not getting what we need 
And so you better not, you don't, don't ask your kids to fix your anxiety or to fix your grumpy placeness. <laughs> you know, that's, that's your work. You know, it's not even, it's not your spouse's work. It's not your mom's work. It's not your kid's work. It's not, it's just your work. What do I need? Do I need a couple minutes in the morning? You know, do I need, do I need to get up earlier? Do I need to go for a walk every day? What, you know, think about what do you really need? What makes you feel better? Do you need to, you know, light a candle that smells good in the room? I mean, does that just like help shift you a little bit? Think about yourself so that it doesn't, it doesn't mean you have to go away for four days. <laughs> it just means that you have, you know, little things that make you feel like I'm happy with this life or this mm -hmm. is a tough phase and I can still have little things that give me some joy. And, um, and then you think, okay, then why am I clinging to that? Well, not me. I got a tougher life than everybody else. Well, maybe you do, but you only got one, you know? So what, how do you want to live it? Every day you have a choice. Even if you, have, even if we all stood together and you win, you got the toughest life. <laughs> how do you want to, how do you want to live it? How do you want to be? How do you want to feel? And so that's up to you. That part is all on you, you know, on how am I going to cope with everything that I've got going on and what can come off my plate? What could I get a mother's helper in to play that candy land again? <laughs> what can I do? So you have a lot of choices in your life that, that aren't big. They're little and they can make a big impact. But if we don't bother to look, if we don't bother to list them out, what are some things? It would make me happy to come down my stairs and see that painting right there. Oh, yeah, I like that. You know, then do it. You know, just yeah. make some little choices for how you want your days to go. Right. And so by digging in, that's how we figure that stuff out, right? Because... Exactly. Sometimes it's even figuring out exactly why I'm feeling off kilter, right? Yeah. Sometimes you don't even know exactly what what your fear is. You, you, you know, you just have to take the time and look, and not be afraid to look. You know, yep. to figure that out, and then then the next step. Okay, you know how how can I move through that? And like your ideas, great ideas for you know how can I bring a spot of joy? How can I? enjoy this moment more? How can I set things up to be um, more enjoyable for myself? You know, I know I used to do that when I made dinner, I used to light a little candle, maybe have some music on, maybe listen to an audio book, or maybe the kids were playing in the kitchen at the table, and I was cooking at the same time. You know, right. there's just so often ways for both things to happen but yeah you have to have taken the time to think through it to realize okay what are those little pieces that would make me smile that you know would remind me that I'm here and we're all together and and just bring me back to that moment really essentially right right, right. <laughs> we always come back to that don't we <laughs> Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. I so loved I it. So appreciate it. It was you know, fun. Pam. I can always just sit here and talk with you for hours. <laughs> it's and so the people are like, oh, there are those two go again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I love digging into this kind of stuff because you know, as we said at the outset, it's it we do get a nice bump often. We feel a connection with an idea. And, you know, it gives us a sense of community too, but it, it is so helpful for ourselves, like just yeah. us as, as human beings to dig in and take that next little step to understand ourselves better, the lifestyle that we're choosing, um, unschooling, all that stuff is going to help us grow, like you right. said, that root so that we don't feel so buffeted around by mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so 
Where can people find you and all your work online? Well, they can find all my memes on Instagram, yep. Unschooling Mom to Mom. <laughs> and sometimes we get them over to the Facebook page. Sometimes I don't hit that little button. I don't know. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it doesn't. And But I was thinking about what this what might be really helpful for people that like this topic is I do have that membership group that is only $20 a month. And we talk every week on Wednesdays at noon central time. And it's a nice little community. It's small. And when you have something going on, it's nice to have other people help you come up with that list of other things or help you, um, just see it from a different perspective. It really helps to be able to go in there and say, I feel so stuck. Why am I stuck? And it's not really something you want to write about on 28,000 member Facebook group, <laughs> but you would like to talk about it with some other people that are on the same path as you, maybe a little before, maybe a little after, and we're all in there together. And um, so I do want to invite people to join us in that because that's really really helpful it's a nice little small community so sweet that's awesome yeah all right we'll have a lovely day sue i'll talk to you soon thanks so much pam bye y'all bye